Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Rachel Williams begins now. Good evening everyone. Parts of Hobart's waterfront were closed off this morning as authorities responded to a potential threat. The area was swarming with tourists after the Sydney Hobart yacht race with a bomb squad called in to deal with the suspicious object. An area usually bustling with tourists evacuated. Police were alerted to a suspicious package here on Evans Street outside the Henry Jones Hotel at around 11 o'clock this morning. Indicated that a car stopped abruptly, dropped the esky off and then departed rather quickly. That scenario coupled with uh, the presence of the item is why we responded in the way we did. A strong security presence cordoning off the area with this red esky the subject of concern. Obviously we're very aware of the fact that the taste of Tasmania is on, it's the end of the Sydney to Hobart, it's simply the fact of the scenario that evolved prior to it that we've had to make some decisions to, to keep the community safe and take some action. While buildings aren't being evacuated, tourists are being turned away from the area, with police advising them it is a precautionary measure. Experts from the bomb squad called in, using a portable x-ray device to determine what, if anything, was inside. Those investigations finding the esky was empty. Investigations will continue to try and identify that car and those people, um, but at this stage there's no offence other than littering that's actually occurred. A false alarm causing chaos on one of the busiest mornings in Hobart's peak tourist season. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. Wild Oats 11 has bounced back from a disastrous few years to claim one of the most thrilling Sydney Hobart victories in the race's 74-year history. Our sports reporter Tom Cooper is at Constitution Dock. Tom, what an unbelievable finish it was this morning. Good evening, Rach. It certainly was. The four Super Maxis battled tooth and nail the entire race. And early this morning, it was still anyone's for the taking, with only four nautical miles separating them, just a couple of hours out from the finish line. Now, as you mentioned, it's been a tough few years for Wild Oats 11. Forced to retire from the race in 2015 and 2016, the same year owner Bob Oatley passed away. Last year, of course, victory was stripped from them following a protest from Comanche regarding an incident at the start of the race. But this morning, just after 8am, the Super Maxi glided into the River Derwent to claim its ninth line honours win. Now, there are emphatic scenes here from the crew and I'll have the full race wrap, including the interview with skipper Mark Richards a bit later on in sport. Rach? Can't wait for that. Thank you for that, Tom. We'll see you later in the bulletin. Meantime, our reporter Louise Hedger was down on the waterfront to capture the excitement following the end of the race. Thousands of spectators gathered to watch history unfold and some ecstatic yachties prepare to celebrate in style. Crowds gathering to witness Wild Oats 11 celebrate their momentous victory. Oh, look, I think this is by far the most spectacular you know, Sydney Hobart in 74 years, so you can't ask for much better than that. But, you know, the crowd, the boats, the fleet, the, 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 the level of competition is just amazing, so uh, just awesome. Infotrack's crew settling in for some serious celebration. Christ, I need a shower, I know that. I must be humming. <laughs> um, and then I believe we will go and find some liquid refreshment somewhere. I think it's customary that I buy all these guys drinks for all night. An electric atmosphere on and off the water with thousands of spectators soaking up the end of this year's Sydney Hobart. It's the atmosphere, the boats arriving and it's such a big, big um, thing for Tasmania, the Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. We love coming down here. We've been here for about the last, I think, 20 uh, yacht trips. We, we're working in China so we come over every, every Christmas. And, and to be part of the festival. An amazing day. The next generation taking it all in with the New South Wales Cadet Sail Team members catching a glimpse of their heroes. They put in so much work to just this tiny, tiny, quick race. It's um, it's one of the hardest races in the world, and um, it's an achievement to sailors to be able to sail on it. At just 17 years old, Tasmanian's Will Sargent is too young to compete this year, but he's already gearing up to be part of the action next year. I think it's the addiction factor a little bit. Um, I started five years ago and ever since I've been hooked. Um, it doesn't really matter what the conditions are. To say you've done a Hobart's a pretty big thing and there's not many people that can say it. It's always a dream of a sailor uh, to make this uh, famous uh, race from Sydney to Hobart. 
It's a really a great dream. A great dream to be achieved by more than 1,000 crew members in 2018. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. Investigations are continuing into a fatal collision on the Arthur Highway at Dunalley yesterday. An 18-year-old male passenger died in the incident, while the 18-year-old female driver remains in hospital. Police say the driver veered onto the wrong side of the road and collided head-on with a ute travelling in the opposite direction. That is the uh, centre of the investigation uh, as to why that actually occurred. Uh, and that uh, is uh, subject to an ongoing uh, investigation. The passenger of the Ute received minor injuries while its driver walked away physically unharmed. The name of the young man killed has not yet been released. Authorities are appealing to the public for dash cam vision after a driver evaded police in Launceston last night. Officers were conducting random breath tests on Elfin Road when the White Holden Commodore Ute made a U-turn before the site. The incident comes amid a police crackdown on dangerous behaviour on our roads. There's so many people utilising our roads at this time of the year. So uh, with that high use, uh, road use by motorists, it's only timely that we remind, um, remind them you know, to do the right thing, slow down and pay attention. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. The new look Taste of Tasmania has officially opened its gates for another year of festivities. Around 250,000 foodies are expected to gather on the Hobart waterfront over the next seven days, sampling some of the best local produce our state has to offer. Let the celebrations begin. The Taste of Tasmania officially opening today, celebrating its 30th birthday. Keen visitors lining up this morning to get their first look and taste inside. I feel so excited. This festival has been in my head for 10 months, so to see all the ingredients come together is just epic. A traditional ceremony kicking off the event before the festival's 112 stalls open for what is bound to be a busy seven days. the largest and oldest food and wine festival in Australia so it's a great source of pride for everybody who's uh, involved with the City Council today. Two legends of the taste honoured with a very special surprise, a tribute for having stalls at every single festival since 1988. For the much loved festival mushrooms they're expected to get through around 1.5 tonnes of produce this week. I've actually got a letter from the Mushroom Growers Association of Australia saying that Tasmania has the highest per capita usage of mushrooms and they put it down to the tempura mushrooms at Christmas time. When we first started it was, um, it was completely different. There wasn't much of a wine and food culture in Hobart to be honest and it was very difficult to get people to taste wine. 250,000 guests expected to taste the very best food and drink Tasmania has to offer this festive season. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. It's been a tough year for the Tasmanian Greens, left to rebuild the party after suffering a disastrous state election result. In the first of our special political reviews, our reporter Michelle Wisby sat down with Greens leader Cassie O'Connor to discuss just how she believes the year played out. An emotional reflection on the year that was. Tasmanian Greens leader Cassie O'Connor still finds it hard to speak about the party's devastating election result. It's absolutely gutting. The ripple effect of that kind of an election result is felt very widely. The March state election delivering the worst results for the party in 20 years. We were under-resourced. Uh, we don't take the big political donations, so we raise our money through, you know, um, uh, generous benefactors and raffles, really. Uh, but we didn't have the resourcing and we didn't have enough people on the ground. Losing their seat in Bass, leaving just two members with the difficult task of having a voice on the rowdy floor of Parliament. Actually came out the other side feeling you know, a bit bruised and battered, but really willfully determined to, um, to build that vote back up. A party with roots in Tasmania, Miss O'Connor adamant the Greens still have a role to play despite its low numbers. I feel that because this parliament is quite finely balanced that we are able 
um, to cut through and to make an argument for um, a change of direction. Much of that comes following the controversial election of Liberal MP Sue Hickey to the role of Speaker, more willing than her predecessor to listen to Green's policy. Just how much has she changed the dynamics of the parliament? Sue has changed everything. Um, we are now in a parliament that is much more dynamic, where you have um, debates that are much more about a contest of ideas. It's a change that's allowed the Greens to get many amendments through what was once an unflinching majority of Liberal members. How different is that to, you know, not just the last four years, but all your time in Parliament? Has it ever been like this before? I've got a speaker in the chair who's prepared to look at an issue on its merits and listen to the debate and vote according to her conscience. While Green's ideas such as pill testing at festivals and increasing politician numbers have failed to gain traction, the party led the charge for changes to birth certificates to create fairer rules for transgender Tasmanians, a personal triumph for Miss O'Connor. I hadn't had a feeling like that as a parliamentarian for the best part of five years because in the previous term of parliament we couldn't, we couldn't drive legislative change. And despite leading her party to a failed election, Miss O'Connor says she's committed to stay in her role as leader. I personally feel that I've got the energy and the capacity and I've settled into the leadership in a way now um, uh, I, I feel very strongly about seeing this through. But for now she's taking a few weeks off, regrouping for what is sure to be another eventful year ahead. We're briefly going to leave the country but um, not for more than two weeks because summer in Tasmania is just the best. Yeah. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Well there's a cheeky new couple in town with two young apes taking up residence at Tasmania Zoo. The white-cheeked gibbon is critically endangered and it's hoped the new additions will help raise awareness of the struggles the species face in the wild. Swinging into the spotlight, these two white-cheeked gibbons might be naturals on the monkey bars, but as it turns out, they're actually apes. The pair are the newest arrivals at Tasmania Zoo. So they've been here a week now. So we have uh, Tian, our male, so he's the uh, black one up there, and then we have Nu, our female, so she's the blonde one. The couple is a long way from their natural habitat. They arrived to us from Adelaide Zoo, um, but they are um, native to Laos and Vienna. It's hoped those that come to see the primates will learn more about the plight of the species in the wild. They are critically endangered, um, primarily due to timber and uh, agriculture, but also the pet and bushmeat trade. In particular, keepers say they want tourists to be more aware of the way the animals are treated overseas. All those uh, you know, cute little gibbons that you get to take photos with um, are usually poached um, from the wild, um, so just to raise awareness about that as well. An issue which has resulted in the population being decimated. There's estimated to be less than 300 groups out in the wild um, and then they're not very common in captivity either. It's because of those dwindling numbers more efforts are being made to breed the species. White-cheeked gibbons are known to mate for life and Tian and Nu have already grown to be soulmates. It's hoped within the next year or two the pair will successfully have a baby. But for now these playful young ones still have a little more growing to do and there's no doubt being a bit cheeky is in their nature. Oh no! Judy Augustine, 7 Tasmania News. Wild Oats 11 is tonight celebrating one of the most incredible victories in Sydney Hobart history. The nine-time winner made its move off Tasman Island this morning, arriving in the River Derwent with the three other super maxis hot on its tail. Too close to call after more than 600 nautical miles of racing. The four super maxis approached Tasman Island early this morning, with last year's winner holding the slightest of leads. And we just ran into a massive hole. Everything just stopped. And because the other guys were so close behind, then they all saw that happen. They jibed out immediately and I was stuck in it. Basically sailed around the opposition and got ourselves in a position where when the breeze filled in from the southwest this morning, we were in the right spot and off we went. 
The crew of Wild Oats 11 arriving in the River Derwent just after 8am this morning. One day, 19 hours, 7 minutes and 21 seconds after setting off from Sydney Harbour. The skipper labelling it the most incredible Sydney Hobart in history. One of the best yachting wins in my life and I've won a lot of races I can tell you and it's, um, this is one of the best feelings, not just for myself, for the whole team and the Oatley family. Blackjack the next across the line just 28 minutes later for accusing the winner of foul play. We, we were a little bit disappointed because um, Oates didn't have their AIS on and that meant that we couldn't track where they were. The rules say that you've got to have it on. With no official complaint lodged, however, little is likely to come of it. Unlike last year when Wild Oats 11 had its line on as victory stripped following a protest from Comanche. But today it was water under the bridge between the two skippers. I took a beer around to him this morning after we got to the dock and in fact it was the first thing I did. Look, it's a day of redemption for us, that's for sure. I mean, um, after last year's result, it was just so disappointing. But um, today, whether people like it or not, it was Wild Oats' 10th time over that line first, regardless of what anyone says. Comanche crossing the line in third, just over a minute behind Blackjack. Info track arriving soon after in a finish that's not likely to be seen again for decades to come, if not ever. Certainly the most exciting Rowick Sydney to Hobart yacht race that I've been in, probably the most exciting yacht race I've been anywhere in the world. Wild well, Oats 11, I mean, what, a, what, a, what an Australian icon. And it could be a race to remember for Tasmanian Yacht Alive also, with a 66-foot Canton Keeler in the running to claim handicap honours after arriving in Hobart around 2pm this afternoon. But the crew, based out of the Derwent Sailing Club, will have to wait for several other contenders to cross the finish line over the coming hours. Locals have stolen the show at this year's Launceston Carnival. Crowds cheered on the homegrown athletes as they snapped up four of the big titles. The Launceston Carnival was just that. On wheel, foot and axe, the night belonged to the locals. It started with Launceston's James Hansen pulling off this daring burst at the end of the 1600 metre running race. Neck and neck, um... Like I felt, I felt like I was timing it pretty well, but the distance was just like starting to get further and further out with like a lap to go, and I like didn't know if I could make it or not. The motivation to win was to pay for his wedding. Amazing, the wife will, wife will be happy because they definitely need the money after, after the trips. Launceston's Amy Wright clawed her way to the front of the women's wheel. The victory, a fitting gift, a day after she turned 16. So much. This is one I've wanted for so long since juniors. And to win, my, this is my first senior big wheel race, so to win it is just amazing. Fellow local Josh Duffy stole the wheel race from favourite and 2017 winner, West Australian Sam Wellsford. I've come in with decent form. I just come off Rosebury win, and then I won Georgetown wheel before that. So come in with good form and had a good mark, so I knew I was a good shot. But the night wasn't without its spills. <laughs> Meanwhile, Winkley's Amanda Beams finally clinched victory in the wood shopping title after securing second place two years running. To win a world title in your home country and your home state, that's, that's pretty cool. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. And the action continues tonight with the Latrobe Carnival now underway. Sean joins us again now and Sean, one of Tassie's homegrown heroes, is back on the track. That's right, Tom King Island, as Stuart McSwain has made his carnival return. He's expected to run in the 1600 metre race later tonight. We've just seen the men's and women's gifts wrap up moments ago. Devonport 19-year-old Brooke Jones claimed the women's, followed by Melbourne's Matt Napier. Here's a little of what they had to say. I'm ecstatic for that. It was a big run and had some really good competitors in that race, so I'm really happy. Actually feeling pretty good actually. Um, tailwind help today, sun's out. So yeah, all around good day. And the night isn't over with more events expected to kick off. We'll have full coverage of the carnival tomorrow night. Thanks for that, Sean. Good evening. There were isolated showers across the state's north this morning. Maximum temperatures were up to 10 degrees above average. Launceston reached a high of 31. It was 27 in Burnie, 26 in Devonport and 21 degrees in Hobart. Flinders Island and Ouse felt the heat today, both with the state's high of 34. In St Helens it got to 31, 30 in Friendly Beaches, 29 at Smithton. It was 26 at both Grove and Liawini, 25 at Lowhead. King Island reached 24 and it was 21 degrees at Strawn and Mariah Island.
The satellite shows convective cloud throughout the central and eastern parts of the state with patchy high-level cloud about the north, mostly clear skies elsewhere. Zooming out, a band of mid-level cloud extends from WA to the Tasman Sea and central parts of the mainland are mostly cloud-free. Tomorrow, a cold front will cross Tasmania and weaken. A ridge will also persist over the eastern mainland. Northerly winds up to 20 knots during the day and up to 35 knots about the south. Swells up to 4 metres. And we do have a gale warning current for southern coastal waters from Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point for westerly winds, as is a strong wind warning for lower eastern waters from Wineglass Bay to Tasman Island and from western waters from Low Rocky Point to Sandy Cape and for the Channel and Storm, Frederick and Norfolk Bays. We also have a small craft wind alert for the southwest and central plateau lakes. Early rain in Hobart tomorrow, a top of 23, 21 in Maydina, 23 also for Oatlands. Launceston morning rain and 27, a possible storm for Devonport, 23, 19 degrees in Lyawini. Morning rain and a possible storm for Burnie, a top of 23, 20 degrees for Strawn, 20 also for Marawar. Rain easing and 28 for St Helens, the same for Swansea, 25 and 24 degrees in Orford. The UV will be extreme. On Sunday, showers about the far west, far northeast, otherwise fine. Similar conditions on Monday with north to northeasterly winds developing in the morning. And to ring in the new year, showers about the west and far south, otherwise fine. Taking a look around the country tomorrow, a sunny day for Perth, 28, Adelaide, a top of 30, a shower or two for Melbourne, 25, 31 for Sydney, and 30 degrees and partly cloudy for Brisbane. And currently in Hobart, it's 19 degrees, mostly sunny. Launceston, 26, also mostly sunny. And sunny in Devonport as well, 22 degrees. Thanks, Rachel. Well, that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. Good night.